And in this talk, I would like to present some of the new features. Can you? Some of the new features available uh, in uh, ABPI version 0.7. This is now the first talk that uh, I give on uh, the ABPI project. So I won't enter into the details. Uh, I just have two slides to give you some uh, context, especially for those of you who have never uh, listened uh, uh, about ABPI. ABPI is a Python project uh, designed to uh, analyze and post-process ability calculation, generate input files uh, automatically, connect ABINIT with uh, uh, external tools, and there's also a significant part uh, that we use to uh, automate calculations, not just at the throughput level, but also for uh, debugging, uh, benchmarking, uh, uh, and the testing uh, new implementations done in Fortran. Why are we using Python? Well, the reason is that Python uh, is very flexible, powerful language. Uh, it has great support for uh, uh, science, and here I'm uh, mentioning uh, some of the most important uh, Python libraries uh, available in the PyData ecosystem. There are also projects such as IPython and Jupyter Notebooks that are enhancing uh, the, inter uh, the interactivity of the language. Uh, when it comes to high throughput applications, uh, Python allows us to implement more, the more complicated logic we need for uh, modern ab initio workflows. And last but not least, there are several packages for ab initio studies that are developed in uh, Python, including uh, the PyMagen project, and indeed ABPy relies on uh, PyMagen. In a nutshell, uh, we use the code independent, the code agnostic objects, uh, low level uh, machinery implemented in PyMagen, and then we specialize uh, the Python implementation in ABPy to deal with the, the ABINIT output files, uh, input files. Uh, just a few words about the installation. You can install ABPy with the PIP, that is the default uh, uh, Python package manager. Alternatively, you can use uh, Conda. There's an official uh, uh, Conda channel uh, called ABINIT that provides ABPy as well as a pre-compiled version of uh, ABINIT, when CVPSP and AtomPo. The difference that PIP is mainly designed for pure Python packages, Conda is uh, also able to uh, install C, Fortran, C++ applications. And the last but not least, if you want, you can download the repository and install from source. <coughs> Okay, now, the new features. First of all, we have a brand new uh, website with the documentation. And here we have the, the uh, initial section explaining how to install the package, a section about post-processing tools, some documentation for the workflows, and the uh, documentation for the Python API. If we go to one of the galleries for the post-processing tools, we have a collection of uh, scripts, and one can select one of these examples. It's a little bit slow. And uh, there we find the Python script that you can download on your laptop uh, and uh, execute to analyze the data. Then there's also another GitHub repository collecting examples and lessons that are based on uh, Jupyter Notebooks. And, uh, the idea is to rewrite some of the official ABINIT tutorials in Python with ABPy. So this is the notebook. There we have the first part with the links to uh, the materials project in PyMagen. For each object, uh, we document the uh, API and the methods. For each output file, uh, we have a notebook uh, with examples uh, showing how to produce uh, figures or, or tables. And in the last part, we have the ABINIT plus ABPI lessons that are inspired by the, the official tutorials. But obviously everything is reformulated in Python, so you generate input files in Python, post-process the results with ABPI. <coughs> uh, as I mentioned in the first uh, slide, ABPI is not just high throughput. There's really a lot of stuff for post-processing. And uh, in order to stress the fact that ABPI is not just about automatic calculations, I decided to present some of the new features in terms of a command line interface. 
So obviously a, a Python script would be much more flexible, but the main goal here is to show that one can replace uh, standard tools such as grep, vi, and gnuplot with a command line approach. Uh, we have uh, five scripts designed for different uh, uh, tasks. Uh, the first one um, uh, operates on a single output file to visualize data. Uh, abstract operates on crystalline structures, initialized from external files. Then we have uh, abicomp to compare multiple files, perform convergence studies. Uh, finally, we have abview for a quick visualization of the results. And the last script is a very simplified interface to the machinery we use to generate input files. Uh, you can uh, access the documentation of the script with uh, the help option, and there's also an HTML uh, documentation at this URL. Okay, so let's start with some basic example. Uh, first of all, let's assume that uh, I've performed some ground static calculation, and I want to have a look at the final structure, forces, pressures. So you don't need to use an editor or a grep to ex extract the results. You can just use a be open with the print option. Uh, when you see the syntax with the, the exclamation mark, it means that I'm inside the Jupyter notebook, executing the, this command, capturing the output, and I'm displays, uh, displaying this output inside the HTML page. So in the, in the terminal, uh, you should remove the exclamation mark at the beginning. Uh, there are more than 45 file extensions supported, so the output that you get on the terminal depends on the, the file you are analyzing. There are cases in which it makes more sense to visualize the results. So if I have a, a CDF file with fat bands, I just replace the print option with expose, and there are matplotlib figures that are automatically generated. There's a set of figures for each uh, file extension. And then another nice feature is that it's also possible to generate Jupyter notebooks automatically with a predefined list of Python statements. And this allows you to move from the terminal to the Jupyter notebook in which you can save the matplotlib figures, the tables, export to HTML, and send the HTML to your collaborators. Uh, another nice thing is that AbiOpen can handle the main output files. In this case, what I obtain is the initial structure, uh, structure, then tables with basic dimensions, and then at the end, it's not displayed here, the final structure extracted from the main output file. Uh, you can also open log files. Log files are not machine readable, but ABPI is able to extract the comments and the, the warnings directly. If you want to visualize uh, a main output file, you can use the expose option, and by default, the script will visualize the SCF cycle. Here I have a ground state followed by a DFPT calculation. So this is the ground state SCF cycle, this is the DFPT calculation, and some uh, information about the work time spent in the different parts of the code. And uh, as we have seen this morning, we started to add more YAML documents in the main output file, and this means that we should be able to add uh, additional features, uh, additional post-processing tools, thanks to this uh, YAML-based uh, approach. The other script is abstract. These are all the commands that are available. I'm not going to cover all of them, just the most important cases. A typical problem, we have an etcdf file. We want to export uh, the structure in another format. We can use abstract, convert, and then we specify the format at the end. And other formats are supported as well. Uh, I usually prefer to visualize structures, so I use abstract, visualize. This script will generate, for example, a C file and invoke a graphical uh, software automatically. The default is Vesta, but you can also change the application on the command line. Uh, there's also an interface with the materials project database. In this case, I'm searching on the database materials project for the structures that are matching the structure found in the NetCDF file. Uh, these are the results available on the materials project. If I don't have a file, and I want to search for all the structures matching uh, this uh, uh, formula, I can use abstract, mp-search, lithium fluoride. Obviously, you can also use the materials project website, but sometimes <laughs> I prefer to use the, the, the terminal for a quick uh, uh, analysis. Uh, MP-view is another script for uh, 
a quick visualization of the results with some pre-processing uh, at the beginning. Okay. Yes. To get the, at the materials project uh, database, do you need a token or something? Yes. Uh, you, first of all, you have to register on the materials project, then there's a configuration file in which you add your token, and the script so will... No, 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 it's, this is wrapping the Pymagen uh, machinery. Hmm? Uh, uh, it's documented in the materials, pro um, Pyma materials project website. Uh, okay, so a review for a quick, quick, quick visualization, and I, I use it a lot to analyze the DDB files. So in this case, instead of writing the NADDB input file, running a calculation, extracting the, the, the results, I just type IBView, DDB, and then I pass the, the path to the DDB file, and I have the band structure with phonon DOS and projected the density of states. If you add the phonon website option, there is also an automatic interface with the, the web app developed by Rick that allows you to select the phonon mode and visualize the, the pattern in, in real space. Uh, in this case, is it the DDB on, on a regular mesh? Uh, yes, the, the yes. Yeah. Uh, no, no, it must be on a regular mesh in the IBG, actually. Okay. And uh, the, the script will figure out the Q mesh uh, associated to your DDB file. Uh, and we'll use this to, to generate the an DDB. Because we parse the DDB file, so we know the list of Q points, uh, also whether the DDB file contains a born effective charges uh, and uh, the macroscopic electric tensor, so we activate automatically the treatment uh, of the long range part. Mm. Uh, okay, so if you are interested in metals and you want to visualize the Fermi surface, ABVU, FS. This is the Matplotlib uh, uh, backend, but other applications are supported as well. Uh, another script is Abicomp that operates on multiple files to perform convergence studies. Uh, simplest example, I have uh, a bunch of files with the structures, and I want to compare the lattice parameters. And here I can use the, the shell syntax, so star, uh, Unix find within backticks to select all the files in my working directory according to the file extension, and this is the table that you get on the terminal. Obviously, if you're inside the Jupyter Notebook, you get an HTML table that is much more readable, but it works fine. If I replace the structure with the bands, I can compare band structures. Uh, obviously, the shell is powerful. I use it a lot when I have to debug, but there are things that are much easier to implement in Python. And here I want to show an example uh, related to the so-called DDB robot. It's an object that we use to perform convergence studies. So I have four DDB files computed for MGB2, a metal, uh, phonon mediated superconductor. These DDB files are obtained with a different k meshes, different values of the smearing, and I want to analyze the convergence behavior, how the phonon frequencies are affected by these parameters. So first of all, I load all the files in the robot. I change the name of the labels because I have access to the metadata, the header, and I want to have the number of key points and the smearing in the name of the file. And now I start to use the robot API to create tables. These are pandas data frames that are converted directly into HTML. This is a table with the most important parameters of the calculation, similar table for the crystalline structure. And if I want to plot and compare the phonon band structure as a function of the smearing, I can group using this option here and I have phonon band structures computed here for uh, example uh, the same uh, uh, smearing, different k-mesh, and you see that there are some branches that are quite sensitive to the k-point sampling. Okay? Uh, abimp is a script that we use to generate automatically input file. It's not the high throughput infrastructure, it's just a tool that I use a lot when I'm debugging. I want to run calculations quickly and I need a template. Uh, uh, this is the Python API. This is how we build input files in ABPy, starting from C files, pseudo potentials, and some sort of uh, meta variable that defines the key point sampling and the spin polarization. And if you don't want to write Python code and you prefer command line interfaces, you can use abimp, events, you pass either a file with a structure or a materials project identifier and you get a template for band structure calculations. 
Um, obviously, this kind of approach is handy, but cannot compete with the flexibility of the uh, Python interface. This is how we build input files directly in Python. As, as you can see, we try to maintain uh, an approach that is as close as possible uh, to the input file. This is essentially a dictionary mapping uh, variable names to uh, values. Once you have an input file, you can visualize it inside the Jupyter notebook. And there are also factory functions that allow you to generate workflows automatically. So I start from an SCF input, and then I create a workflow for phonon calculation with this QMesh, including bone effective charges. This is the workflow that you get with all the input files, directories that are automatically created, and then you can start to run automatically the calculation. Uh, yeah, this is the last slide with uh, <laughs> the new developments, and uh, I thank you for your attention.